All right. Good morning, Maytown. This uh, video today, as you will notice when you see it, is going to be released early. Uh, it is Thursday, and I'm making this tape, and I was contemplating what I would do here exactly, but um, this is Pentecost Sunday. If you've watched the last two services online and or been here in person, you know that this whole year has been about a combination of praying and fasting, prophetically receiving from the book of Joshua, and then just receiving an impartation that what God wants to do for the church. It's been an amazing year. Um, we're waiting. We're believing for a, I guess I'm going to call it without trying to fall into the old Christianese or Christian terms, we're waiting for revival to be poured out. In other words, no, we're not just scheduling, come on down for a revival meeting, you know, this weekend, not that kind of a deal. We got sawdust chips in the tent. We're believing for an outpouring of God. We're believing in the promise of God to be poured out, the promise that's for you and for me and for all generations. We've looked at this baptism of the Holy Spirit through three baptisms, a baptism by the Holy Spirit in the finished work of Jesus Christ, a baptism by disciples of other disciples, and then by a baptism by Jesus Christ in with the Holy Spirit with the initial physical evidence of speaking in tongues for power, fire. We positioned ourselves to where now we're just leaning on the promise and we're, we're just trying to build faith. It's been the whole dynamic of these last three messages, building faith for a promise of God. You don't have to beg God for a promise. His promise to stand. Let me read you something. I have no PowerPoints. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus gathered them together. This was the last words of Jesus before he ascended back to the Father. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Gathering them together, that's the disciples. He commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for, the, for what the Father had promised. Wait for what the Father had promised. Which, he said, you had heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. He then said, in verse 8, if you skip down, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. And after he had said these things, he, lift, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Luke's parallel passage in Luke chapter 24, verse 49 says this, And behold, Jesus said, I'm sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, lift up his hands, blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he departed from them and was carried up into heaven. I would suggest to you that, and we have over the last two weeks, and I don't want to go back and, and revisit all that, but most people have never heard there was another work of the Holy Spirit. In other words, when you're saved, when you're baptized by the Holy Spirit into the finished work of Jesus Christ, according to uh, 1 Corinthians, I believe it's 10, 13, where Paul says, look, you're baptized in one spirit, into one body. Most people stop there. Some will follow then on to water baptism, but they don't ask for this promise. On the day of Pentecost, this promise was poured out. It really goes back to Moses. When Moses talked, spoke to the Lord and Moses said, look, I can't deal with all the problems of all these people. And he took the 70 elders. God said, call your 70 elders. And he took a portion of the spirit that was upon Moses and put it on them. And Moses literally had prophesied, oh, I wish that all would have the Spirit of God and would prophesy. That was part and partial part of the promise then that came. The interesting thing is Jesus breathed upon the disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And literally within that same context, he then said, wait in the city. In other words, you have the Holy Spirit of God. The church is established. Now wait in the city until you get the rest, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Folks, Sunday, and I would encourage you, and the reason I'm, I'm going to put this video up sooner is, it's impossible for God to lie. Do you know that? In other words, a promise, especially in, in context when it's very clear, it's for you and for all that the Lord will call to himself, for slave, for free, for the Jew, for the Gentiles, for everyone. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out. There was a sound as a mighty rushing wind and... There were cloven tongues of fire. We believe that fire was there because in the, in the wilderness, God brought fire on the altar to affirm his witness and presence and acceptance of the sacrifice. In the tabernacle, you had the fire and the kabod of God consuming. 
in the temple you had the same. And then when the Holy Spirit was then imparted to us, in other words, Jesus said, I'll go back to the Father and send you the Holy Spirit. That day on Pentecost, when the Spirit was given to us, we became the temple of God. It wasn't a building. It wasn't the ark. It wasn't just the presence of God in the tabernacle or the temple. And I believe that's why cloven tongues, fire approving these temples, I believe it was a one-time thing. But the promise, the gifting is not. It's for all the Lord will call to himself. For you and for your children, it's, it's cross-generational. So here we are today. Some would say, well, why doesn't everybody speak in tongues and, and have the power? And I said this last Sunday. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not about the gift. The gift is just the receipt. The gift is the gifting, spirit, prophecy, and all the other things that God wants to impart to you to become that full witness. Will you go to heaven without the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Absolutely you will. But I will give you this example. The thief on the cross only got saved. Yeah, he went to heaven. But he didn't get to take anybody else with him unless his testimony over the years have led someone to give their lives to Christ. His testimony that he deserved what he got, but that Jesus was a righteous man. Remember me, Lord, when you enter into your kingdom. It's amazing to me. Folks, look, we have 13 signed up for water baptism here. Some are being baptized again. They've been baptized before. But the baptism, the water baptism, really didn't have a whole lot of weight to it. In other words, they did it because it was they just signed up for it or it wasn't really any meaning in or it was it was years ago when they were in junior camp or something like that. And now they're on fire for God or maybe they backslid. Now they're back and they're ready. They're going back in that water. They're going to ask God for a cutting off of the old man and rising up. They're going to believe God because it's a new day and it's a new man and it's a new fire. They're going back in again. Some are being baptized for the first time. Some are asking and looking at that for a baptism of fire. In other words, I want all of God and I want to publicly say I want all of God. I'm going to be baptized again and when I rise up, I'm praying for this baptism of the Holy Spirit to come upon me then, the third baptism, to fulfill all righteousness, just as Jesus said to John. Amazing to me. That's what we're going to do. So that Sunday, I'm going to encourage all of you to be here, if you can, be here in person. We're going to start out worshiping the Lord. We have a huge, big tent. It's supposed to rain Sunday. We don't care. We have a huge, big tent. Uh, revival tent up out there. We have the baptism tank in the middle outdoors. It's all covered. We have another big covered grill. We're going to have a big grill celebration at the end, right? The first fruits at the end. And we're going to baptize and see what God is doing. There's been prayer among the leadership group that we may all go back in the tank just as a public demonstration of our dedication to the Lord for revival, for the promises of God. Look, we want all of God. We can ill afford to have this community biblically define us or define our Christianity through their views of a antichrist, non-biblical worldview. I don't see Pentecostalism as the extreme as some denominations do. I just see it as the norm. I'm just a normal guy. I just want what God has promised and I want the fullness of what the Spirit has. So I would encourage you, join us here live, in person, 1030. If not, I would do this in the confines of your house. And I would suggest this. If you can't be here because you're not, demographically you're too far away or you don't drive or whatever, 1030 Sunday morning, I would go back and maybe view this video again. And then I would write there at your house saying, Lord, you know I can't get there, but I'm with them in spirit. In other words, they're there now, I'm here now. Just start worshiping the Lord. And just believing, believing Him for the fullness, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And let Him touch you. Let Him baptize you. Let Him immerse you, baptismal. Let Him submerge you in the Spirit of God. And let that receipt come. Let the heavenly utterance of God, the language, just flow out of your spirit. And just prophesy and pray to the Lord. And then whatever you do, email me, text me, call me. Let me know what happened so I can rejoice with you. And we can help you further understand what just happened. Again, June 5th, 1030, in person. When Joel stood up, and let me just point this out, when he said, this is what the prophet Joel said, Joel was literally building on the promise or the prophecy of Moses. Peter then links Joel's prophecy to the outpouring. Jesus linked it to, from an outpouring to the baptism of fire, the one that John spoke of, and it's all there, and it was all poured out. 
and it's all there for us today. So I would just encourage you, join us. Again, I've got a bunch of notes, but I don't, I just feel compelled. I would so much rather everyone, if you can, if you can be here in person Sunday, and we're going to see what God does. And I tell you what, most revivals break out with small groups. Am I bragging or boasting? No, but am I anticipating all that God wants to give? Yeah. And what is all God wants to give? The promises in the word. I would encourage you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray and accept him right now as Lord and Savior. Just pray, Lord, I confess my sins. I know you're unfaithful and just. I believe you are. Forgive me my sins. You cleanse me right now. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And send your Holy Spirit into me, right? Spirit of God, baptize me with the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross for salvation. And I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Now, if you can't get here to be water baptized, then get a hold of us and we'll figure out another day. Because even though that is the typical order, right? Salvation, water baptism, baptism, Holy Spirit. We know that at Cornelius' house, the believers that came there, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then Peter said, wow, we heard them praying in tongues. There's no reason why they shouldn't be baptized then in water. So then he ordered them to be baptized. So the third and the second baptism were just switched around. It's okay. Don't get hung up on an order. God is a creative God. Just eventually get the order. If you're with me, say amen. 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 All right. All right. Let me close with this. Jesus said this. There was a parable that he talked about the friend at midnight. And the friend came and banged on the door. And the guy said, go away, go away. I'm in bed. My kids are with me. Guy says, I need a couple of loaves of bread. I got some visitors coming to town late. I have nothing. The parable says, even though he wouldn't get up, he would do so for the, for the persistence, literally, for the persistence of the one knocking. In other words, Jesus then finishes the parable with this famous words in Luke 11, 9 through 11 or 10. He says, so I say to you, ask. And it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, watch this, everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. That's what we're going to do Sunday. We're going to get out of the way. We're not given to reckless abandon, but there's going to be a sense of order. But we're going to worship the Lord. We're going to offer salvation prayer for anybody here. We are going to offer water baptism for anybody here. We even went out and purchased, we couldn't find any choir robes or baptismal robes that were worth anything so we got coveralls we got a bunch of, of coveralls here of all sizes there won't be any excuse for anybody somebody shows up they've never been here before the spirit of god falls on them they want to get wet and they don't want to drive home wet we'll give them a set of coveralls they can go in that tank we're trusting god for the promise of the father amazing i'm excited i'm excited i'll be praying for you you pray for us again there won't be anything loosed on Sunday morning. You'll get this video early. And I just, I can't encourage you enough. The writer of Hebrews says, don't forsake the gathering. You can be saved at home. And I know COVID has put us in little pockets. If you're out there listening, and this isn't even your home church, but you need to be water baptized, and you understand what baptism is, come on. You don't have to be a member of this church to be baptized. You show up. I'll put you in line, and we'll baptize you, and we'll believe everything for you, and we'll send you away wet and happy. It's all good. We'll even feed you. How about that? God is good. It's about the church pressing in and believing. I believe, and I tell you what, there's a, just a prophetic sense out there. God's going to do something supernatural somewhere. I would love to read the, 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 the newspaper in the following mornings. Revival breaks out in a little township called Maytown in the southern end of Thurston County. Revival breaks out when a few believers gathered and believed in the promise and God showed up. Wouldn't it be great? Come on and be a part of that. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just leave this right at your feet. It's not about me now. I preach the word faithfully. We built faith for it. We know that there's nothing standing in the way other than us. We're the only thing standing in the way. You listening at home, you're the only thing standing in the way for the fullness of God. It's a promise. You don't have to beg, but you have to have faith to believe. Just believe. Just believe. I pray for Sunday. I pray even now, if the Holy Spirit wishes, just pour out upon somebody right now, listen to this message, and just let them be filled with the, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with that evidence of that heavenly language. Father, we pray. 
Lord, we're anticipating leadership has met. We will pray and we will wait upon you. We will seek, knock, and we're going to ask. And we will receive because it's a promise. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, God bless you. I hope to see you Sunday.